I'm your presenter today. My name is Molly Dvorak. I'm a training and education specialist here at National Crop Insurance Services. Um, my main responsibilities are that I create and deliver training materials for the crop insurance industry. I support the state of Missouri, and I also support the East Coast from South Carolina up to Maine. I began working in crop insurance in 2008, so 11 years ago now. And currently with NCIS, I've been here for six years. Uh, my favorite thing about crop insurance is that it supports America's farmers, and I really enjoy being a part of making the risk management tools accessible and affordable. My interest, uh, along with my sister, we always have said if we won the lottery, um, we would love to have a, uh, a goat farm and animal rescue. So got to buy a lottery ticket to make that happen, and I don't do that as often as maybe I should. All right, let's get started. So we're going to talk today about tobacco. Um, the cigar filler in Maryland types, which are available in Pennsylvania. We're going to go through the specifics of the tobacco crop insurance policy as it applies to the cigar filler in Maryland types. And in this webinar today, you'll learn about tobacco crop insurance and what to do when a loss occurs. Um, I expect today's webinar to last about a half an hour. So although we scheduled for the full 90 minutes, it should be about a half an hour just to give you that time frame there. So some acronyms that you may hear me use today are um, AIP, which is the Approved Insurance Provider. Those are the companies that underwrite and pay claims. APH is Actual Production History. This is the production records over time. The ARD is the Acreage Reporting Date. CAT um, is Catastrophic Risk Protection, and that's a minimum level of coverage on a policy. The CIH, the Crop Insurance Handbook. CP is the Crop Provisions. Um, those are the crop specific insurance details. And FSN is a farm serial number. SCD is sales closing date. That's also the application deadline typically. And SP is the special provisions. Sometimes those are called SPOIS, S-P-O-I-S, special provisions of insurance. And some people even refer to that as the actual policy because there are um, county specific details uh, within the special provisions. So insurance for cigar filler tobacco is only available in the Pennsylvania counties of Chester, Lancaster, and Lebanon. That's it, nationwide. Um, Maryland tobacco is insurable in six counties in the U.S. Five of them are in Maryland, and one of them is in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. Organic certified and organic transitional, as well as conventional, are the insurable practices for those types in the state of Pennsylvania. So giving you some perspective, uh, the cigar filler type of tobacco is exactly what you'd expect it to be. It's not the wrapper, it's not the binder, but it's the filler. The Maryland type is similar to Burley, if you're familiar with that, um, in that it is air cured and stripped. So the stalks are cut, um, they're hung in a barn in an open air type of barn. Uh, it's air cured, and then the leaves are stripped off once they have cured. Um, this type of tobacco, the primary use for it is for American and Swiss blended cigarettes. Let's look at policy specifics. So the most important dates for the tobacco policy are when the application is due, when your acreage report is due, and that losses are reported timely. Both types of tobacco generally have the same dates. The application is due on sales closing date, which is March 15th. The acreage report is due July 15th, which is 15 days after the final plant date. As for the notice of loss, you must give notice to your agent within 72 hours of discovery of the loss. For example, let's say a furious rainstorm comes through, floods part of your field, the affected area was unable to be reached until a week later when you made it out and inspected that there was damage. From that point is when the 72 hours starts, not from when the storm occurred. Looking at the policy and coverage, there's a few items to discuss here. 
Uh, tobacco is insured under an APH plan, which means protection is protection due to loss of production is what is provided. Revenue protection is not available for tobacco. So coverage options range from 50 to 75 percent in increments of 5 percent buy up of your average yield. CAT coverage, uh, the catastrophic risk protection is available for tobacco. Um, coverage is fixed at 50% of your average yield and 55% of the price election. The time frame of the insurance period begins when the tobacco is transplanted to the field and it can end in a variety of ways. There's total destruction removal, except if having been removed for normal reasons like curing, grading, packing, and abandonment of the crop will all end the insurance period. Another way the insurance period ends is if a claim is finalized on the unit, and if none of the aforementioned occurs, then the insurance period will end April 30th for the cigar filler and May 15th for the Maryland type. The end of insurance is the only variance in the dates for the tobacco crops. All the other dates are the same. There's some important elements that are addressed in the tobacco crop provisions and special provisions. The first item is unit structure. Tobacco is limited to a basic unit structure, so no optional units, no enterprise units. Uh, the contract price addendum is applicable to these types and the organic practices. So what that means is if you have a contract that provides for a premium amount over the base price that's been set on or before the acreage reporting date, then you may elect the contract price to be your projected price or price election. Definitely meet with an agent to discuss that in more detail. Production history must be kept separately by basic unit and also reported accordingly. Written agreements are available and they may allow for tobacco to be insured in other counties. Again, meet with an agent to discuss your situation. And quality adjustment, while available on some types of tobacco, is not applicable to these types in your region. Many things can damage a crop, but not all are insurable. So tobacco is protected against loss due to weather events like hail, frost, freeze, wind, drought, and excess precipitation. If it's caused by an insured peril, tobacco is protected against a failure of water supply and also fire. Insect damage and plant disease not caused by improper measures and wildlife are also perils that the tobacco policy protects against. As mentioned earlier, you must provide your loss information to your agent no more than 72 hours from when you became aware of the damage. You must continue to protect and care for the crop, preventing further damage. It's also your responsibility to leave representative samples for the adjuster to inspect when they come out to the field. At least two rows that are at least five feet wide extending the entire length of the field need to remain intact until that acreage is inspected by an adjuster. Well, before we wrap up, let's bring it back a bit and discuss the crop insurance industry in general. So the tobacco policy we just reviewed was developed by the Federal Crop Insurance Corporation and the Risk Management Agency. Approved insurance providers or AIPs support crop insurance agents that you as a farmer work with to apply for insurance, report your acreage and production to, and notify of losses. The agent is also responsible for staying up to date on changes and new offerings in crop insurance. And last but not least, you, the farmer, must do your part in the reporting process and paying the premium. You are the reason crop insurance exists and why agents, AIPs, RMA, and FCIC work hard to make it affordable and available. So how do you find an agent? First, you would go out to the RMA website. 
It's rma.usda.gov. You would click on find an agent that's located at the top of the screen. And then it'll take you to an agent locator tool, which allows you to search by distance, crop, language, or agent name. And as we conclude today's webinar, let's take a brief look at the crop insurance cycle. You'll find an agent using the agent locator tool on the RMA website and be sure to meet before March 15th to be eligible for 2019 coverage. You'll apply by the sales closing date, which is 315 2019 and coverage begins once transplanting is complete. So once you take the seedlings from the area, the greenhouse, and transplant them into the field. Once that's complete, that's when coverage actually begins. Um, you'll submit the acreage report to your agent by July 15th, and that's when premium is calculated. If you experience a loss, you need to let your agent know within 72 hours, and then an adjuster will come and work the claim. And then last, RMA may issue policy changes, and those are issued prior to the next application due date. So changes happen a crop year in advance um, to give you time to um, meet with an agent and discuss any future policy needs. And then the cycle continues again, the application, coverage, billing, claims, and then any program changes. So as a reference here, I included uh, all of the dates uh, that pertain to both the cigar filler and Maryland. I'd say the most important ones, the application date, final planting date, end of late planting date, acreage reporting date, notice of loss, what's required, um, when premium billing actually occurs and production reporting. And remember, these are all for the 2019 crop year. I don't see any questions that come in, but I'll give a moment if you have any questions related to the tobacco policy. I'd be happy to answer them. Well, I thank you very much. Um, for your attention today, as I said, short and sweet. Um, you know, we do have more webinars uh, planned for the month. Be sure to check out our webinar website. Um, some of the uh, individual crops may wind up being slightly shorter in terms of their duration where um, other uh, bigger elements like whole farm, it's a lot longer, crop hail, um, written agreements, it's the other one, um, crop insurance basics. So. Uh, please check those out. Um, there is a great amount of information out there. They're all available um, to you if you had registered prior or if you um, hadn't registered prior, you can still go out there. It'll take you through the registration process, but it's absolutely free and available for you to watch. Um, tomorrow you will receive a summary by email. So let me know your thoughts on today's webinar. And if there's nothing else, then have a great day.